Hi, welcome to lesson 16 in this series of 8051 programming and interfacing. For more information, you can visit us at www.jcbrolabs.org. You can also download the source code and other material from that website related to this lesson. So in this uh, lesson, we will talk about timer programming uh, for 8051 microcontroller. So if you remember when we were discussing about delays, then we talked about timers. Timers uh, are a means to providing uh, a specific or a accurate amount of time delay between two instructions and generally timers are used to count the number of clocks uh, and based on counting the number of clocks they keep on increasing their uh, its content and by that they uh, keep on counting and uh, for each clock cycle they count one and that is how they can provide a time delay between two instructions so going to the timers of 8051 microcontroller, 8051 microcontroller in basic form has two timers that is timer 0 and timer 1. So different ICs from different companies can have different uh, number increased or less number of timers like 8052 has three timers and so on. So now there are two things. It is a First of all, both these two timers are 16-bit timers. 16-bit timers means uh, the content which can be stored in these timers that is of 16-bit word length. And each timer can be uh, divided into two parts of 8-bit each. Well, that means this is 8-bit, lower 8-bits and these are the upper 8-bit of the timers. Okay. And these lower 8 bits can be accessed by the name for say we have this for timer 0. Then these lower 8 bits can be accessed by TL0. So these are nothing but just the registers which store certain value. So this lower 8 bits can be accessed by TL0 and the upper 8 bit can be accessed by TH0. Similarly, for if we talk about for timer 1 then timer 1 is also a 16 bit uh, register and the upper 8 bits can be accessed by th1 and the lower 8 bits can be accessed by tl1 so these are the two registers which are used to store the certain value now when we talk about timers then there are several operations related to these timers and these operation needs to be controlled like how the timer will operate okay so uh, for that we have a t mode register of the timer which says like in which mode uh, a timer will operate so if we have a look about t mode register so this is the general uh, structure of the t mode register it is divided into two parts for timer 0 and for timer 1 and these flags are same for both so we talk about we have m0 m1 C oblique T bar and gate. So this gate pin is used uh, to start the timers by hardware means. Like once we have put the values into TL0 and TH0 or timer register, it needs to be started to start counting. So if we want to start it counting through hardware means, then this gate pin needs to be one. So if as soon as there is a high high pulse at intx pin of the microcontroller then timer will be a uh, timer is started as soon as there is low timer will stop uh, otherwise if we want to start this timer through software means then this gate bit needs to be zero now there is a c by t that is counter or time uh, timer operation so there is a basic difference in counter. Counter counts the external clocks like external pulses which are coming to 8051. Then we say it is a counter. When this uh, keeps on counting the internal clock cycles then it acts as a it is said is timer. So if we want to uh, work this uh, timers in timer mode then this bit this flag needs to be zero. Now there are other two flags like M0, M1. 
these two flags define the mode of the timer operation so there are four modes because there are two pins uh, that is mode 0 mode 1 mode 2 and mode 3 depending on the bits of this m1 and m0 so in mode 0 uh, the timer uh, acts as a 13 bit timer so we just talked about it is a, it, a 16 bit register but uh, when in mode 0 only 13 bits of it will be used and other remaining 5 bits will not be used in that case now in mode 1 the full timer acts used that is acts a 16 bit timer or counter in mode 2 this particular mode 2 is used in serial communication uh, in order to provide the baud rate frequency it is a 8 bit auto reload mode so in 8 bit auto reload mode like or in mode 2 uh, we fill the value of this th higher bit it could be either 0 or 1 and this is tl0 so whatever the content of this is that will copy it back into this tl0 so as soon as it reads up to its maximum value uh, content of this tl0 will be loaded into tl0 and and again it will start counting now this m1 and m0 when in mode 2 this uh, timer uh, acts as a split mode timer that means both this timer 0 this and this acts as a separate timers and the mode of these timers can be controlled by uh, starting and ending operation can be controlled by uh, tf0 tr0 uh, tr0 and tf0 and starting and ending operation of this uh, higher bit counter can be accessed by tr1 and tf1 so in the case of this uh, mode 3 uh, timer 1 is disabled or timer 1 just stop so this is the t moderation which we needs to remember while setting the timer or while programming uh, the timer in a specific mode now there is another bit as well okay before going to another bit uh, one information the timers are up timers timers of 8051 are up timers that means they start counting from 00, 0 or whatever value you put it like uh, we have put the value in timer f2 they start counting from it and they goes up to ffff -F 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 or like uh, suppose uh, for 16 bit timer mode it will go up to fff if uh, it is mode z mode 1 it will go up to 1 fff and so on so they start counting from upward side and and uh, for each clock of the timer as we have discussed like clock of the 8051 microcontroller is the f oscillator frequency y12 so on each clock it counts one and so on. so we will learn how to put the how to find the value for finding the specific amount of time delay into the timer uh, now next thing which is one more registers for 8051 that is timer control bit so this timer control register is used to on and off the timer so specifically tf1 tr1 tf0 tr0 and these are related to the interrupts the last four bits so when we are not using interrupts and we want to control the operation of the timer then these four bits are upper four bits are used so this tf bits f1 for timer 1 f0 for timer 0 are the overflow flags overflow flags means as soon as the timer hits its maximum count this bits sets so this bit will set for timer 0 as soon as timer 0 hits its maximum count and this bit will set for timer 1 as soon as timer 1 hits its maximum count this tr1 and tr0 are used to start or stop the counter like if tr as soon as this tr1 bit is set that means set to 1 timer 1 will start it and as soon as it's set to 0 timer 1 will be stopped similarly for this one as soon as this tr0 is set timer 0 will start it 
and as soon as this TR0 is stop, 0 is clear, timer 0 will stop. So this is a simplest proceed, uh, simplest thing to start or stop the timers. So if we talk about uh, um, a general step for programming a timer, then it's uh, very simple uh, like steps uh, for timers. So first step is the load desired value. And then second step is start timer. And the third step <coughs> keep checking TF flag. And then four, uh, as for uh, keep checking TF flag for setting it one, and as soon as set one, uh, stop timer, stop timer. As soon as this TF flag is set, that indicates like timer has reached its maximum value. And number five is clear TF flag, clear. TF flag. So this is the simplest operation to provide the time delay uh, between uh, two part and instructions. So let's have an example because through example we can understand a lot or we can understand better. So let's say uh, we have oscillator frequency of 12 megahertz, right? And then uh, we will not consider uh, other instruction which are taking one or two cycles. We will be considering only the timer counts like how much instructions are required by the timer. Okay, so uh, oscillator frequency is this and required time delay like we want a time delay of one millisecond. Right? So, uh, time delay is 1 millisecond. Now, from here, we will understand like uh, clock time period for this will be 1 microsecond. Okay. So, number of clocks or number of uh, clocks required will be because time delay is 1 millisecond divided by 1. So 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 1 into 10 to the power minus uh, it is uh, uh, for counting uh, this is for minus 6 so it will come out to be 1 into 10 to the power 3. So these many number of clocks we require for getting the amount of forgetting the one millisecond of time delay now we know timer counts one from one so maximum uh, we will be using timer in mode zero mode one of timer one timer zero we'll use mode one on timer zero that means the maximum count is uh, F F F F. It is in hex. Okay, or we can say it is six five five three six in decimal. It is hexadecimal, or it is six five five three six. We want thousand cycles, uh, one thousand cycles. That means the value of uh, timer or uh, value to be fed into timer 
value to be fed in timer will be equals to six five five three six minus one thousand so it comes out to be six four five three six so this should be the value which uh, needs to be put uh, into the uh, into uh, this timer so that we will get this one millisecond of time delay to get uh, this timer operation or will get uh, timer will take these 1000 cycles to reach up to fff and corresponding we will get one millisecond of amount of time delay so as soon as we will fed uh, this timer by this value uh, and as soon as we start the timer timer will start counting from this one and it will go up to fff and as soon as timer hits its maximum value the tf flag correspondingly will be raised and we will be keep on checking that tf flag and as soon as tf flag is raised will come back from the we will reset the tf flag and we will return from the subroutine so corresponding to it we can check uh, what is the hexadecimal code of it so open this calculator and this go to into the programmer sections and then you will get this so let's say we have uh, six okay it is six four five three six and we want to convert it into hex then corresponding hex value is fc18 so the value which needs to be put into the timer that is fc18 so out of this fc18 because we will be using timer 0 this will go into tl0 and this will go into th0 and then we will start the timer so now let's write a program once we know okay the amount or the value which needs to be fed into the timer for a specific amount of delay now let's start let's write a code into kill and see whether our calculations are right or not let's open kill okay so let's create a new project and let's go to 16 create new one timer and double click and then select this at mega 89 s52 okay and then go to the file and save it with time dot asm because first we'll writing a program in assembly and then let's save it and then add the files select here asm source file and this add close and then change this uh, also change the uh, generate hex file and crystal frequency set it to 12 so now let's write a program so we'll start from org 00h and first of all what we'll be doing we will be generating a clock because uh, ultimately uh, the delay which we are providing it is uh, used to provide a delay between two instructions so we'll be generating a kind of a square wave on the uh, pin 1.0 of port 1 so we will set p1.0 and then we call delay and then we clear p1.0 and then we again call delay and then we will jump again so we will jump here again and here uh, we will create a delay subroutine so in delay subroutine because a timer will start the counting from its value which has been fed from this one and it go up to fff 
so each time each time this timer reach up to fff its original values got uh, 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 got forgotten so we need to keep on uh, uh, keep on putting all these values again and again into the timer so we'll set tl0 uh, we will put tl0 the corresponding value that is 18 tl0 is hash 18h and then we'll move th0 comma hash uh, that was fc h to 0 f fc h and then we will set uh, we'll set bit of tr0 so as soon as this tr0 is set timer starts running and then we'll keep on waiting again we'll uh, okay again has been defined so we'll keep on waiting here through jnb jump on no bit because tf0 is, is at starting at zero so we'll keep on waiting uh, uh, by checking the bit of this tf0 and as soon as this tf0 goes one uh, that uh, that indicates like timer has timer has reached its maximum value so we will stop the timer by clearing this tr0 and then we will clear this tf0 bit as well and then we will return from the timer function okay and uh, this uh, and let's see if program is done okay there's a uh, one more problem uh, we have not uh, set the mode of the timer because so uh, I hope uh, it is clear so let's clear it because we want to uh, put the timer into a specifically timer uh, 0 into mode 1 so if we remember 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 yes so for mode mode 1 this bit should be 1 this should be 0 and all other bits should be 0 because we are not using timer 0 and we are not providing it gate control we are using timer of mode so uh, so the corresponding value into the t mode should be 0 x 0 1 so uh, <coughs> we will send uh, at the starting of the code, we'll send t mode because it's a register hash 01h. So now it's done. So let's compile it. Okay, so here we are saying we have a syntax error. Mm, where? D E L F I D E L F I move T L zero. Okay. It is zero and by the words return O. Okay. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, let's see again. Okay, there's only one mistake here. Move T mode comma hash zero one H. Okay, it is saying syntax error. Yes, set is nothing. It should be set bit. Yep. And now there is zero. Yeah? So let's go to this one. So let's see what we have in our peripherals. Okay, here it is timer one. So it's timer and uh, okay let's start that logic analyzer as well and set it uh, because 
we want it p 1.0 Oh, so let's go it and let's run it one by one so uh, set it 1.0 so it says inset and let's clear it again so time is zero at 16 bit mode and then timer and t mode is 0 1 tl 0 is 0 3 so <coughs> Uh, this command is taking 1 and 0 so that is why timer has started up to 0 1 so this tf0 has been reset and tr0 has been reset so if we go into it uh, go into this command so let's move one by one this tl0 has been 1 8 yep and then ts0 has been fc so fc 1 8 the starting value and then started tr0 and it will this value is increasing right if you can see here on one clock it's system is one so let's go up so this is how that means our timer is working so we can do one thing stop and we will start it again okay and let's run and let's see okay we are getting the delay now let's see what is the amount of delay which we are getting so it is uh, a delta amount of delay is 1.017455 millisecond so that exactly what is we just calculated like uh, like again have a look yes it is uh, more precise it is up to 1.013 milliseconds so this is how we can provide a delay using timers uh, and that is more precise uh, in uh, uh, in uh, this uh, assembly program so we can do one thing uh, because the delay uh, is also counting uh, like uh, uh, from starting this one this is taking one millisecond one uh, one machine cycle one machine cycle one machine cycle right and as soon as we started it timer starts counting from this value and again it's taking two and three three to five machine cycles again in order to uh, really go back to the uh, set bit command so if we can remove uh, this uh, from here if we can advance it by five or two machine cycles so fc25 if we can have fc25 i hope you are understanding because these one one instructions are also uh, taking some machine cycles so they are also taking part in providing the delay so if we can uh, uh, compensate by the count uh, for this then we can have more precise delay okay let's stop it because it needs to be first compiled and then let's start debugging okay and then stop and let's see now it is more precise it is now 1.00634 microsecond uh, a millisecond so it is It is nearly 0 0.9992373 milliseconds which is very much accurate of timing and this kind of accuracy we can't achieve uh, through the previous uh, through the instructions way which we discussed in previous lessons of providing delay. so this is how these timers can be used for providing delay in an uh, uh, 8051 microcontroller so you can check uh, in the next to next lesson we will be talking about like uh, uh, serial port programming so in that case we will be using this timer into auto reload mode so in the auto reload mode uh, because right now we need to put the values again and again into the timer register so in the case of auto reload mode we need not to do that again and again it will be doing it by itself automatically so we will learn it so this is how 
so i hope you understand how to do this timer programming uh, in uh, <coughs> how to do this timer programming in uh, assembly for 8051 microcontroller so in a, so that's it for this video thank you